I am visiting the Desmont mine today. Uh, I thought I'd show you. So this is the parking area. So that's the road you, uh, that little road you take from uh, there. Yeah. So today I'm visiting the Desmond Mine. Uh, I believe that's Cedar Lake Road. Uh, and that little trail, uh, that this is the little road you take off Cedar Lake Road. And then right after you t get off of Cedar Lake Road, you have this area to park in. And then I believe the trailhead is just up ahead by the hydro poles. Um, this is one of the places in Wilberforce where you have to uh, get a collecting permit. It's pretty easy. You just go up, on, uh, go online, and uh, apply for the permit a couple days ahead of when you want to go collect. Um, I would say uh, make sure to do it like I think it was like three business days. I'll even put a link below. Uh, hopefully, I remember uh, to the to the site where you can apply. Uh, but I'll try and show you guys the trail up there so that you guys know how to get up there if you've never been there. So this is the entrance of the trailhead leading up to the Desmont Mine. You know, you want to take this up for a bit and then you want to take a right. And I'll try and show that to you guys uh, as we go. And this is like an old uh, kind of like road slash trailhead. I think probably eight, some local people still use this as an ATV trail, if I remember correctly. But I'll try and show you where you have to go to the right to head to the Desmont Mine. It's pretty straightforward. Um, with the permits, you get a map and they give you like the GPS coordinates and pretty straightforward instructions on where to go. So it's not that confusing but just in case, I'll show you guys. As you're walking up the trail, you'll know where to split off because the old road isn't cleared and the trailhead leading to the right is cleared because this is a, a, a local county run operation. I guess they so kindly clear it, which makes it easier for me and you guys to know where we're going. And you can actually see there's a I don't know if that orange tape's a indicator of trails or if that's um, an indicator that something needs to be cut down. Pretty sure that's red tape. Uh, I might be wrong, but that's the trail leading up to the mine. And from the road to here is probably roughly three to six minutes, a uh, three to six minute walk. Maybe I was a bit slow, but that's the way up. You know you have reached the right area when you get to kind of this long pit. And it's in this pit where the minerals are. Now what's the uh, actual main reason to go to the Desmont Mine? Well, the Desmont Mine has this mineral called molybdenite. It's this kind of flat, silvery mineral that forms in a hexagonal shape. Kind of like mica, actually in the sense that it's it's formed in sheets and it's got that hexagonal shape though it's it's not at all related to mica um it actually has molybdenum in the mineral hence the name molybdenite but this place has molybdenite i believe it's i seen it the best is when it's in the uh kind of the green diopside matrix it's this kind of granular matrix let's see if there's a piece yeah, I think this is a piece of that granular. Yeah, so this is the type of matrix you're looking for. I believe it's found in this mostly. And you just crack open the matrix and you look for those uh, molybdenite uh, crystals. Now you can also find them free floating. I found uh, probably actually down right there. I found a, uh, a molybdenite crystal twin. So it was two molybdenite crystals kind of uh, fused together, but they were just free, free floating off of the matrix and not on matrix. But yeah, this is what the site is ma uh, mainly for, is for collecting molybdenum, or not molybdenum, molybdenite. I haven't even moved into the main area yet, and I already spotted, have spotted a piece of molybdenum 
or sorry, not molybdenum, molybdenite. Can you guys see it? Uh, it's a very silvery mineral. Looks like there it's either a partial crystal or maybe uh, two little twins. It's hard to tell. But, man, there we go. Does not, oh my goodness, it does not want to focus. Why? That's the molybdenite that you're looking for. It's that silvery mineral, and you can see it's thin, forms in sheets, and it's got a metallic silver sheen to it. I was just looking around at the different piles and stuff, just seeing what there was. Kind of getting a lay of the land before I start breaking open rocks. And I just spotted this little molybdenite crystal. So, looks like it probably was washed out in the last rainfall. It's intact, it's got its uh, six sides. Actually, I see something else over here that's kind of interesting looking. Of, uh, you can also find diopsite here, but it's usually not really well formed. But this one seems to, well, the one side is well formed. And that looks like it's got some lumpy turbinations. That's pretty cool. But yeah, hopefully I can find a nice hexagonal molybdenite in uh, matrix. That would be pretty cool. If I do find other cool things, I will definitely show you guys. This is just a discarded piece, but you can see right there, that's a bit of molybdenite. So this is the type of matrix we are looking for, and it's just going to be growing in this matrix, or it grew in this matrix, and you're basically looking for pieces that will fall apart on you. And what you're hoping for is that the molybdenite is right along that fracture, and it still is in the matrix. I think I saw this piece also has some molybdenite on it. Yeah. Right on that corner. Just a really smashed up piece, but... So you're just looking in the, kind of the green granular matrix. And you're looking for the molyb molybdenite in that matrix. The bugs are bad here. Um... I did find a couple more just fragments of molybdenite, and then I found this tiny little, pretty well-formed uh, diopsite crystal. So that's cool. But I kind of got an idea of where I want to dig, so I'm going to start digging there. I'm going to start cracking open rocks and looking for the molybdenite, uh, the molybdenite. So what I'm doing right now is just kind of digging through the material. And then if it can break, I just break it open and check for molybdenite crystals. Um, the better pieces of material are this harder stuff because the matrix is a bit harder, but it's still soft enough probably to break easily with a hammer or just with your hands. And the idea is that you, this harder stuff will probably hold on to their the molybdenite crystals. Um, better than the uh, soft stuff. So that's why you want to go for like this kind of harder granular diopside and you oh Oh look at that <laughs> Ask and you shall receive you got a nice uh, book of uh, Molybdenite right in matrix nice Doesn't look too damaged the edges are a bit smushed but beggars can't be choosers that'll uh i'll probably give that it trim that up just slightly but that's basically good as is but yeah that's the idea you just look for the right type and you just break open the the rocks that you're looking for oh there's a Large flake of molybdenite, so this is a really good spot. Found a bunch of flakes of molybdenite. Um, but you just look and you, the ones that you're done with, you throw off to the side, out of the way, in an area you know you're good, and you just keep going. 
and hopefully you'll find some more. Wish me luck. Hopefully I find a nice big one in Matrix. That that would be cool. Busted the first one I found. One crystal popped off actually, but it, inside two more crystals were exposed. One fully facing and then one partially. I do have the one that popped off, so I'm just going to cheat and repair this one because it, it'll be cool to have all th three crystals, um, Libidonite crystals on there. So, but that's just from cracking open the, man, it's struggling because of the Libidonite. It's struggling to focus. I find my camera struggles with shiny things, uh, but I'm going to repair this one because there's no way I'm not going to have three nice molybdenite uh, crystals in Matrix in a specimen. That it'd be a, a waste not to. I know it's cheating and it's frowned upon by some collectors, but I don't care. If it looks good, it's cool. Your best bet from finding the molybdenum, or sorry, the molybdenite, is going to be looking for this, the grainy stuff that has a bit of rust in it. You can see there's a molybdenum, the molybdenite crystal. And then there's a whole bunch of other ones. There's some small ones. I found some small ones. Some miniatures. They're quite, um, yeah. Well, that one's probably busted. No, it's not. I gotta be careful because they're like literally just hanging on by a thread. So if I like touch them in the wrong way they'll pop right out of the matrix because they're just kind of loosely held in there <laughs> and there's that one that I found at the beginning that I already showed you guys but yeah look for this this type of matrix here's one that's ready to go just look for that matrix and I would say just start cracking open any of the rocks that have that kind of grainy diopside matrix that has uh, rust spots in it. And I'm sure you'll find some molybdenite. I think I'm getting close to the end. I did find this piece. Uh, right. There was a piece that I was just busting open that had a bunch of like little silvery molybdenite bits in it. And then... You can see, like, yeah, that was the outside, so I was seeing those bits. And then, just along the fracture, it fractured the right way. So I got a nice, fat, molybdenite crystal. The camera really hates trying to pick up the crys these crystals. They're so shiny and reflective that the camera struggles to pick it up. Here we have all the specimens cleaned up. This is the one I repaired. It's just this crystal had popped off of the matrix but the imprint that it left was still there so the matrix wasn't damaged and it's just a nice specimen nice example with three crystals there's a bigger one kind of partially poked out of the matrix and then there's these two that are nicely exposed with their hexagonal faces you can see the camera really doesn't like the uh, super reflectiveness of these uh, molybdenite specimens because it just like suffers to, it struggles to focus when the uh, molybdenite is uh, so reflective. Here's a nice, you can see this one's a thicker crystal, nicely exposed in the matrix. This one is just a small one that is like very loosely held in the matrix still, just sticking out of the matrix. Um, this one is another small example, but nicely in the matrix. And it's got a slightly wonkier shape, which is kind of interesting. Then I found a couple of diopside specimens. The diopsides there are quite like grainy and like granular. But I found a couple like this one where it's a it's still kind of rough, but it's a technically it's a double terminated crystal. The termination on this end is a bit wonky, but it is terminated. It's not damaged. And it's just a Biggest one I found at the uh, Desmont Mine. And then we've got some smaller pieces, crystal pieces of diopside. Probably require a bit more cleaning. 
And then of course, uh, some of like the free form uh, molybdenite uh, books that I found. This one popped off of the matrix. You can see there's a little bit left on the back. So I'll try and keep that matrix on there. And then this one I just found lying on the ground out of the matrix already. It's kind of this large wonky crystal. Probably some minor damage to it, but this bottom part I think, I've seen some other examples where I think this is actually natural formation and it's just formed like this. It could be two smaller um, crystals that fused together as they formed. And so you get this weird wonky look. I, ha I have another example that I know for sure is a twinned specimen of molybdenite because it is basically two very noticeable that it's two books of molybdenite that fused in the middle. But these were my finds. I would say I was quite successful at Desmont Mine this time around. A lot more successful than the first time I went there. I found some nice matrix pieces. So I am quite happy with that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video because we are at the end of it. If you like this kind of stuff and you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. I do rock hounding, arrowhead hunting, lapidary, flint napping, related videos so if those are your cups of tea do consider subscribing and watching more of my videos because that really helps me out and i really appreciate that thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video also i want to apologize if it sounds my audio sounds more echoey it probably is because i'm actually filming for the first time in my apartment basement so I don't really have, it's an open concept basement, so I don't really have like a small enclosed space. So I'm going to have to figure out, uh, maybe get some like soundproofing panels that I can kind of just move around and put around my desk so I can dampen the sound a bit better.